Hello YouTube! Hey, this is Cole Regal with Regal Metalworks. Back in the shop today. Got some uh, little project done here for the United States Marine Corps. This is a uh, loading ramp. Um, this is the ramp they use to load in their smaller flight simulators. And they had an issue where this is too steep of an angle, as you can see here, when they load some of their newer um, simulators across this, they actually bottom out on this. So that they were sticking in pieces of plastic, hard plastic they had to try and alleviate those kicking out and whatnot. So they wanted me to come up with a way that we can extend this ramp out, but have it removable because this particular piece fits underneath the door that this goes into a side door in a trailer. It slides underneath and you can't make it any longer. So I came up uh, with this idea here where we got uh, three pins in it, three half inch pins that I made, lathe. It just pops down on there just like that. So now they'll be able to wheel their simulators over that. They got an additional 12 inches here that can sit inside the trailer. And when they take it back out, they'll be able to roll right down it. We want to head and taper the edge down here a little bit, as you can see, so that it doesn't, the wheels don't hit it and get stuck on it. But that will uh, stay firm in there and won't roll around on them. Hey, Mr. Man. Hey, Mr. Man. Over here today, we finished up the powder coating. I didn't document any of that. The powder coating is all done for the in-chain design trailer hitches. I delivered them earlier today, so they should be going out to any of you that have purchased them. I know they were re remarking to me they had put in a small, smaller order this time, um, but when Mike was giving away Street Speed 717 was giving away his C5 Corvette, uh, the sales went through the roof. So they're like, they don't even know how many more orders they got. They're, so we'll have another batch of order of them coming in. I imagine it's going to be substantially larger than this last one. Here, we've got the roof up, we've got the wiring plumbed in. I don't know if you can see it, this is pretty dark. So we're gonna have two outlets there. We got two outlets here. I got my timer here. This is for the tumbler. So I got a 12 hour timer that runs to these switches so it'll, it'll shut the pump off in the tumbler. And of course the light switch here. So we're running the lights up there. We're just gonna run uh, four foot or eight foot strips across here. We ran out of this really nice tongue and groove board, so we just decided to put in uh, two by ten or yeah, two by ten uh, joists. So we're gonna lay plywood up there, so we'll have that uh, support as well. But it's pretty stable up there. We'll be able to load or store quite a bit of stuff up there that to get out of the way. As you can see, we got a ton of stuff piled up here. We got a ton of stuff down here that could could possibly quite be stored up there. And we have a lot more floor room here, space room. As big as this place is, we're, we're quickly running out of space. Here there's a uh, there's a framed out door to, to the back area, which eventually I want to get done, uh, like fenced in and whatnot, so the dogs can go out there. We can have a break area in the spring and whatnot. But we need access up here, and we were debating about how we were going to do the stairs up here. If we were going to do stairs, or if I was just going to drive a forklift in and, and load items up there, which is okay for some of the heavier items. 
But the issue we have with uh, that is if we do, in fact, get that water jet, it's going to take up a bulk majority of this room. We're not going to really be able to put a forklift, drive a forklift up in there. So steps, stairs, spiral staircase would be cool to fab up. Terrible for carrying stuff up, but it would be great for space savings because we could actually probably do it in the corner there. The other thing is if we do do a door here, we could do a narrow set of steps here. You you weren't really, really you don't need to carry anything out there per se because you can go around the back of the building. But this, if we do a set of stairs right there, we'd be able to walk up. Maybe we'd have to face it the other way, maybe quite possibly because we have more headroom there. I'm not sure if anybody has an opinion on that. It'd be nice to hear. The other thing is we could have done stairs in here straight up in through here. We could have done stairs coming this way, access up in there, but it'd be kind of hard to tie the joist in. Those steps that go up to the loft up there, we thought about maybe somehow tying off a platform to get to air, but there's not really a good area or room to do it. I don't know if you can even see that. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we're at for today. Um, I got some machining I got to do. I had to order some material. I didn't. I didn't have machine or I didn't have the right um, width of material to machine for the. Um, I could show you on the computer for this crampon. This is the crampon they're planning to use. It's a Vasic and. Uh, by Petzl. And it's quite a bit different than the other one I did, which was also a Petzl. Let me turn the light in here. There we go. So I kind of hate adding so much, a lot, a lot more weight to that. So if we go into Fusion 360 here, I was, this is, this is the piece that I'm going to make that adapts to that. And that is the stock I need. I didn't quite have three and a half. I had four by inch and a quarter, but it was just enough to do one. That's a lot of material we're moving. So I just ordered some pieces so I can make at least four of those. But if we go back into the model here, you can see the piece here. If I can get a good side view here. So I apologize if you're seeing the lights flash. It's because those are cold. It's cold in here. It's really cold out today. My new furnace hasn't come yet. Well, here's the model that I have mocked up. So, let me see here. The lug, the prosthetic lug that goes on top, there, that's what would bolt to there. And you have the adjustability for positioning so that you can actually reposition on here. And how I drew this, which was pretty neat. Oop, wrong way is I set a canvas up of the pitcher. So there it is. And I scaled that to the scale size as best I could. And then I basically started designing my shape around that to fit the, these contours. So I have the contour here on the side and this kind of bends down. So I kind of did a nice little arc here. Um, it's not perfect to fit, but we don't know how far until I actually get this made, what we really have, and we really only need a couple points of contact on this, anyways. So that, if we turn on this one here, I think, no, it's the other one. This guy, and we do a, a front view here. You can see the top view here. So our contour coincides with that. So the biggest issue I had was how the hell am I going to attach this to this crampon? The last one had holes in it, it was easy to do. This one here has this snow deflector so that keeps snow from building up underneath. So we don't want to lose that. We want to keep that intact. So I, I don't have access to really any holes. The only holes I have access to are right here. And this hole, normally there's a heel piece that comes off. There's a boot piece that goes over here, it's like a strap. And then there's a, the heel piece has a strap that comes in through the back of this guy here and in through here. So I figured, I wonder if I could utilize that, that port right there somehow. 
so what I did is I drew this body up here and this would bolt onto it. Let me turn that canvas off. And that will bolt right right to there and you can see that it that has the tab right here. This guy. And that will slide in to here. So that will lock the back in there. So now we need to attach the front. And what I did there is I put a lug on the side here that bolts on. And here's the lug on the side. Right here. So you can see this lug, this bolts right in on here, and then there'll be another bolt that uses this hole right here that will come through there. I don't know why this thing always turns crazy ways. I'm not happy with how thick and chunky that looks. I mean, I, I tapered it down as best I could. Uh, it's just not, not a lot of room there to work with. And the contours, everything's bent. And it's kind of hard to shape this to where I want it to be. So what I'm thinking of designing is another one of these pieces completely in fusion here that actually attounts, uh, that attaches directly to the prosthetic lug, to this guy right here. And if that attaches directly to this here, I'll just remake this plate. And I figured you can have two prongs in the front and two prongs in the rear. There's no real need to have the, the six prongs like this have because this is for the ball of, of a human foot and then you'd have a heel. But with a prosthetic, prosthetic leg, you're just gonna have a, a direct limb that comes down. I can't imagine that you would need something bigger than that. So I'm, I'm going to prototype one of these pieces up as well that bolts directly to this prosthetic lug, which I do have one of these. And it would be a lot easier than having to machine all these pieces so that I can make something like that. It would be a lot lighter. You wouldn't have this additional aluminum piece and the bolts that attach um, these pieces here, although they would be fairly small and probably negligible. but. If you're wearing this thing 10 hours a day, you're, you, you know any weight savings is going to be uh, greatly appreciated. But I'm going to make a set of these. I got the material coming, and then I'm going to start designing the piece that would be stand uh, a cramp on all on its own. So it would be only utilized for the paraplegic, uh, the prosthetic uh, joint here. And if anybody can tell me why. This never wants to move the way I want it to move in fusion. Like if I go directly to, to the left side here, and I just want to I just want to rotate this a little bit this way, it just jumps around on me, and I don't know why. If anybody can tell me what the heck I'm doing wrong. Now on my laptop I have a touch screen so I can actually touch it and just move it. So it's really nice. I just don't know why, you know, won't let me like why it won't let me do that. I use the hand tool that moves this, but it doesn't allow me to rotate it. I can never seem to get it into position. It drives me crazy. I don't know if a space mouse would be better or not. That's just a quick update I have. Let's get out of this blinking room for today. We're still waiting for the furnace. I had to put a new starter in this guy. Fire this up the other day because sometimes I use the forklift as a table to work off of because it's convenient. You can set it up to whatever size to throw a pallet on it. But uh, this thing wouldn't start, and the starter finally died on it. Got a new starter put in it. So hopefully, the furnace will be here soon so we can replace that 75,000 BPU with a 400,000 BPU. Because right now it's like 55 degrees in here um, at head level. I'm sure it's probably about 40 at the ground, so my feet are getting pretty cold. But that's about all I have for updates for today. Just trying to get called up. So, all right, until the next one, we'll see you then.